Since 2013, the Los Angeles Dodgers have been one of the top teams in MLB. Over the last 11 seasons, the Dodgers have won the NL West 10 times, and that one season that they didn't win, they were second with a 106 and 56 record, one of their five seasons with at least 100 wins. And they've also made the World Series in 2017, 2018, and 2020 when they won it all. Now they've been able to have this kind of success by being one of the best and most well-rounded teams in MLB boasting an offense that's been first in OPS, WOBA, WRC+, and F4 since 2013, and a pitching staff that's been first in ERA, FIP, Sierra, and F4 too. LA's been one of the top teams in baseball during this stretch because they've been one of the best teams at turning out talent. Now, they're always going to be able to attract free agents too, but by using analytics to get the most out of not just their young players that they've developed through their farm, but probably the most impressive part of the Dodgers player development has been how they've been able to revive so many players' careers who are on the brink of MLB death. And I mean, we were surprised when they didn't do it with Noah Syndergaard this year. R.I.P. Thor. Over and over at this point, we've seen the Dodgers take guys who have either struggled to establish themselves at the major league level or who just look like their time in the big leagues is coming to an end, and they've completely turned them around and gotten great production out of them. But every team in MLB has access to these numbers. I mean, hell, we as fans do. It's how I can even make this video. So. How have the Dodgers been so much better than most teams at reviving players' careers? Do they just know something that we don't? Do they have some baseball geniuses locked in a back room somewhere? Are they just using the same Hollywood witchcraft that's kept Brad Pitt and Keanu Reeves looking young and hot forever? This is what I want to talk about today. Not Hollywood actors or why I just called other men hot, but instead, Let's take a look at a handful of players that are some of the best examples of how the Dodgers have completely turned around or brought back to life an MLB career and discuss the changes that they make to both hitters and pitchers to help them get the most out of their talents. And as we get into that, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe and turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss out on any future baseball videos like this one. So first, let's start with hitting. And like I said earlier, the Dodgers have been arguably the best hit team in baseball. And this starts with a couple things. Before a hitter even gets to swinging the bat, the most important part of an at-bat happens between their ears with the approach that they're going to take at the plate. And I'd argue that the most important part of a good approach comes down to patience and discipline. Because hitting a baseball is hard enough when you're not helping the pitcher by swinging at pitches that you shouldn't be, especially if those are out of the strike zone. And the Dodgers have again been one of, if not the best teams in baseball, at having a good, disciplined play plate approach, ranking first in walk percentage, walks per strikeout, and chase rate. So this is where it starts when the Dodgers look at players that they can try to bring in and get more out of. And this is what led them to bringing in the hitters that we're going to talk about. Probably their two most famous and Chris Taylor and Justin Turner, and also David Fries and Jason Hayward. When the Dodgers brought these guys in, Taylor and Turner had both had some time in the majors but hadn't really established themselves yet, and they were role players at best. Then Fries and Hayward were both guys that had put together good careers but were getting towards the end. But one thing all these guys had in common was a good approach at the plate, whether that was more so in the minors for Taylor or in the majors for the rest of them. So the Dodgers were ready to take a chance on them, especially when they all had room to grow with one simple fix to their swings. None of these guys were really known to be power threats before joining the Dodgers. Taylor didn't hit a single home run in 86 games with Seattle. Turner only hit eight home runs in 300 118 games to start his career, Freeze only managed 15 or more homers once in his first nine seasons, and Hayward only hit 20 or more twice in his first 13 years, and the last time was in 2019. None of these guys had been major power threats before, but the Dodgers have been the best slugging team in baseball since 2013 because they went against the old traditional wisdom of swinging down on the ball, and they got guys that either hit the ball in the air or they started teaching their guys who weren't doing it to make this change. You can't hit a ground ball over the fence for a home run. You have to hit it in the air. And that sounds so stupidly simple when you hear it or when I say it, but we still have coaches, players, and analysts today that swear by the fact that you have to swing down on the ball. Even though the batting average between a ground ball and a fly ball in the majors 
isn't that different, and you get barely any slugging on grounders. So if you want to get the most out of your swing and the base hits that you do get, you have to hit the ball in the air. Even if you're not a guy that's gonna hit a lot of home runs, most of your extra base hits still happen in the air. And this is the adjustment that the Dodgers had all these guys make, whether in their one season that they were here or over their years in Dodger blue. Taylor, Turner, Freeze, and Hayward all jumped up their launch angles during their time in LA, and this adjustment played a major part in all these guys putting up big numbers for the Dodgers. Taylor in 892 games hit 104 home runs with a 255, 334, 442 slash line, 776 OPS, and 108 OPS plus and made the all-star team in 2021. Turner in 1,075 games hit 156 home runs with a 296, 375, 490 slash line, 865 OPS, and 133 OPS plus, making the all-star team twice. Freeze over 98 games hit 13 home runs slash 328, 421, 607 with a 1.028 OPS and 169 nice OPS plus to finish his his career, and Hayward in 124 games this year, his 14th season, hit 15 home runs with a 269, again, nice, 340, 473 slash line, an 813 OPS, and 117 OPS plus. All these guys put up better numbers by hitting the ball in the air, and when I hear people complain about this approach to hitting, they talk about a hitter's batting average just tanking when they hit so many fly balls but you get most of your surefire hits on line drives, not fly balls or grounders, where again, you get basically the same average on those two. And to hit a line drive, you have to hit the ball up in the air. So you want to aim to hit these high line drives or low fly balls, not sky high pop ups. So going against the old school wisdom of swinging down on the ball and changing these guys swing paths helped the Dodgers get the most out of these guys that look like they didn't have much left in the tank at the time. So we see how they've helped hitters either turn their careers around or prove that they still have something left in the tank, but now what about the pitchers? Because they've been able to do this as well. Again, remember the Dodgers have also been arguably the best pitching team all around in MLB since 2013. And obviously having Clayton Kershaw helps a lot with that but they've been able to work their magic on veteran pitchers to go along with their own young arms. With all the new technology that we have nowadays, teams and pitchers are able to find out their spin rates, the amount of break, and all kinds of stuff that helps them find out what pitches in a guy's arsenal are the nastiest. We talk about stuff all the time when it comes to pitching, and having good stuff or even one or two just nasty pitches can make or break a pitcher's career, and the Dodgers are more than aware of this. When they bring in a veteran arm, they've been able to figure out what a pitcher's strengths and weaknesses are, and especially when it comes to their pitch mix, how a pitcher can make the most of his stuff. High strikeout guys have always been sought after by major league clubs, because if hitters can't even touch your pitches, then they have no chance. But having pitches that hitters whiff on a bunch also usually leads to better results when they do make contact. Because if a pitch is hard enough just to get a piece of, then good luck squaring it up. And this brings us to another trend that we've seen taking over baseball that the Dodgers haven't been afraid to embrace. And that's been pitchers being more willing to throw their secondary stuff way more often especially if they have a nasty breaking ball or off-speed pitch that gets them better results than their fastball does. And what the Dodgers look for more than anything when figuring out how to revamp a guy's pitch mix is what his swing and miss pitch is and how he can maximize it. And we can see this in a couple examples last year with starting pitchers Andrew Heaney and Tyler Anderson. Heaney from 2014 to 2021 had pitched in 121 games, going 634 and a thirds innings with a 4.72 ERA and a 445 FIP and Anderson from 2016 to 2021 had pitched in 117 games, throwing 623 and two thirds innings with a 462 ERA and a 443 FIP. Neither guy had really been able to establish themselves as even an above average pitcher, but they each had a pitch in their arsenal that had this swing and miss potential. 
For Heaney, it was his slider that he'd actually ditched for a couple years, and for Anderson, it was his changeup. The Dodgers had both of these guys start throwing their swing and miss pitch more often, and leaning on these pitches more, Heaney had the highest strikeout percentage, chase rate, and whiff rates of his career, and Anderson gave up the second lowest barrel rate and exit velo of his career by getting the most chases that he ever has, and both of them posted their lowest average allowed. In their one season with the Dodgers in 2022, Heaney put up a 3-1-0 ERA and a 3-7-5 FIP over 72 and two-thirds innings in 16 games, and Anderson put up a 2-5-7 ERA and 3-3-1 FIP over 178 and two-thirds innings in 30 games. Finding a pitcher's swing and miss pitch and having them throw that as much as they can, again, just seems like a stupidly simple idea, but it's how the Dodgers have been able to get the most out of some of these veteran arms. But you can't just throw the same pitch over and over it just turns into like a hitting drill for the batters. So you still have to have other pitches that you can pair with that main one. Now Heaney and Anderson both already had these other pitches, but this is what brings us to this year and a couple relievers that the Dodgers brought in and worked their magic on too. Shelby Miller and Ryan Brazier. Miller has had a real up and down career with the down part coming from 2016 to 2022, where in 65 games, he had a 702 ERA and a 521 FIP over 202 and two thirds innings. And Brazier was signed mid season after he was released by the Red Sox after a 729 ERA and 435 FIP over 21 innings in 20 games. Now the Dodgers did the same thing with both of these guys. They switched Miller back to going fastball first and then his slider, and they flip Brazier to slider first and then the fastball to maximize their highest whiff pitch, but they also recognized that both of these guys needed another pitch to keep hitters off of that main one. Miller could go fastball slider against righties, but he needed another pitch to pair with the fastball against lefties. So this season, he started throwing a splitter that he can use against both sides of the plate, but he hardly ever throws that slider to lefties now. Then Brazier would pair his fastballs with his slider. Against righties, he started throwing more sinkers than the four-seamer, and he added a cutter against lefties that took over for the four-seamer as well. With these changes to their pitch mixes, Miller pitched 42 innings in 36 games with a 171 ERA and a 368 FIP, and Brazier turned his season around with a .7 ERA ERA and a 248 FIP over 38 and two thirds innings in 39 games. Maximizing a pitcher's best pitch by having him throw it as often as he can without it losing its effectiveness and making sure that he has pitches to complement it and keep hitters off of that main pitch has just been another newer trend in baseball that the Dodgers jumped all over and it's helped them and the pitchers that they've brought back to life. For over a decade now, the Dodgers have been one of the ideal franchises in baseball using everything available to them to get the most out of their players and play an impressive form of baseball. They've been able to bring players back from the brink of baseball death and get everything they can out of them while they're in Dodger blue. And it's a great example of how we can see analytics help teams and players make adjustments to help them get better. By throwing out old ideas of swinging down on the ball, having to establish the fastball first, and only throwing certain pitches in certain situations, the Dodgers have embraced the analytics and the new ideas that have come with it. And it's made a drastic impact on their organization and the players here in LA. I could not hold that back anymore. Shout out my letter, Kenny fans. Taylor, Turner, Freese, Hayward, Heaney, Anderson, Miller, and Brazier. They're just a handful of the players that we've seen this team make a major impact on. And in the end, I know it also comes down to the players themselves putting in the work and making these changes. But LA's player development has been a big part of this as well, and they've improved way more players than I have time for in one video. So let me know what you think about all this and what you've seen from any of these players, other players, and how the Dodgers have developed and improved the players in their organization. Especially if you're a Dodgers fan, you've seen more of them than I have, so I'd love to get to talk some baseball with you. And also, if you made it this far, you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss out on any future baseball videos like this one, and to help the channel reach more baseball fans and grow this community. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to help out, you can either check out our merch store that's down in the description, or simply check out our latest video next that's on your screen now about whether or not the Baltimore Orioles may have finally found their ace or two and the American League is just screwed now. 
Thanks again for watching. Have an awesome day. Later.